1.4 Rewriting Formulas and Equations. You can take a little peek at this comic right now. We're going to get back to it. Um, you'll see a question on the last slide of this PowerPoint, and you'll need to answer that question for class, and then we'll talk about it. Let's start off with some common formulas. So distance can be written as a function of the rate that you're going at and the time that you've traveled. So in other words, what? Distance equals rate times time. All right, it has a nice little ring to it. Distance equals rate times time. Temperature, how do we convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit? Fahrenheit is equal to nine-fifths of the Celsius temperature plus 32. All right, and if anybody knows the freezing point, for Fahrenheit, if we go under freezing, it might snow, so you might want to know that temperature for a snow day, potentially. It's really easy in Celsius, because zero degrees Celsius is freezing point. Fahrenheit isn't so easy to remember, but when you know this formula, well, zero degrees Celsius is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and so you guys can know if it goes under 32 degrees, you might have a snow day. All right, what is the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle is one-half times the base times the height. One-half base times height. And this isn't anything really to memorize because, well, what is the area of a rectangle? The area of a rectangle is length times width. Length times width. Or why don't we just call it base times height since we just said triangle is one-half base times height. A triangle is just half of a rectangle. Yep. All right, um, the perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So why don't we just draw a picture here. So the rectangle, we just said, all right, these are all right angles. That's why it's a rectangle. Then this is the base and this is the height. So then our perimeter would be just add them all up, B plus H plus B plus H, which is two Bs plus two of the Hs. Okay, and what about the area of a trapezoid? Well, let's look at the picture first. What's it look like? It's like that, kind of. All right, and uh, let's just drop a height down in this one. Okay, let's label that height. What else should we label in this one? What do we have? We have bases that are unequal. So let's call this base 1 and let's call this base 2. Well, I think of this as the area. Well, the area of my rectangle was the base times the height. It's the same idea in this one, except now I have two different bases. So I'm going to average the bases and multiply it by the height. Doesn't that just seem natural? Absolutely. All right, so the average of the bases is just B1 plus B2 over 2, right? The average of the bases times the height. So we can write it like that. We could also stick that 1 half out in front if you wanted to. It doesn't matter how you write it. I just think about it. That's how it comes. All right. What about the area of a circle? Pi r squared. So we have a circle. Here's the radius. The area is pi r squared. And what's the circumference? 2 pi r. 2 pi r. Just a little funny one for that. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Circumference equals 2 pi r. Fuzzy wuzzy was a bear. Area equals pi r squared. Moving right along. Use the equation for the area of a trapezoid to solve for B1. All right, so again, here's our trapezoid. Here's our base one, here's our base two. Draw down a height there. So we say our area is the average of the bases times the height. Now, we want to isolate B1, get it all by itself. Why don't we just get rid of this H? That might be easiest, so we just isolate that part. So let's just divide both sides by H. Okay, and so we have A over H equals B1 plus B2 all over 2. 
and now we want to get rid of that 2, so we could multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that fraction. So we have 2a over h equals b1 plus b2. And now let's scoot this b2 over to the other side. And so we're left with 2a over h minus b2, and I just ran out of room. is equal to, I'm left with B1. So that's my answer. Solve 4x plus 6y equals 24 for y. And then find y when x equals 2. So we want to isolate the y, so the first thing we want to do is move the 4x. So to move the 4x, we subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. Okay. And now we have 6y is equal to 24 minus 4x. And now we want the 6 to go away. And we can do that by dividing both sides by 6. And we have to divide each term, right? Right. Okay. So now y equals 4 minus, and since it's 4, 6, we can reduce that to lowest terms. Oops, I jumped ahead of you. Okay, two-thirds. Two -thirds. All right, so we got what y equals, and then we want to find y when x is 2. So when x equals 2, y equals 4 minus 2 thirds times 2, which is 4 minus four-thirds, and when we do that subtraction, we end with two and two-thirds. Okay. Solve 5xy minus 8y equals 11 for y. All right, let me write this out again. 5xy minus 8y equals 11. Well, I want to isolate the y on a side all by itself. I've already done that. But now, I can't combine any like terms. They're not like. So, what do these two have in common? Well, they do have that y in common, don't they? So, let me factor it out. So, I'm left with 5xy divided by y is 5x minus 8y divided by y is 8 equals 11. And now, to get the y all by itself, I just divide both sides by 5x minus 8, and I'm left with y equals 11 over 5x minus 8. Okay. The school store sells t-shirts for $22 and sweatshirts for $34. Write an equation for revenue from selling X t-shirts and Y sweatshirts. Okay, so we know what X and Y are. And so the revenue is just $22 that each t-shirt costs times how many t-shirts we're selling, which are X plus $34 times Y, which is the number of sweatshirts we're selling. And that's it. That's how much money we take in, our revenue. Mm -hmm. So, as I promised, this closing thought, what is the shape we are finding the volume for in the first comic? So I want you to think about that, and we'll talk about it when you come to class. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.